Mohinga is like very unique dish because I think it's like sweet, salty, but also spicy and sour because of the ingredients. Yeah, the, the smell is very distinct. My name is Ashley. Lily Yu. A weird Burmese Chinese or you can also say Myanmar Chinese. We're going to make mohinga today, which is a very traditional Burmese dish. These are the ingredients we use in mohinga. It's fish sauce, turmeric powder, bass filet, but we usually use catfish, onion, chili. If you don't have this type of chili, we replace as a paprika powder, and then ginger, garlic, lemongrass, rice noodle, roasted rice, and then this is a roasted rice powder. We also usually use banana chunk for the soup, but we don't have it today. Oh, that's a traditional uh, Burmese dish. When we're growing up, that's what we eat every day. So it's a good for her to learn that, so that way she could pass on to whoever. <laughs> okay, first you put the oil. I've been eating mohinga since I was a child. It's and I've actually never made it before despite eating it so many times. I learned mohinga from my mom and uh, helping her out. This one is a grounded ginger, uh, lemongrass, and garlic. And then you just make it stir fry a little bit. Probably my mom used to cook that a lot. Yeah, I think we, when we do it, we make a big pot and I eat it all day long or either the next day. I used to own the Burmese restaurants and I, I learned from my chef also. It's a lot of work to do and then mostly the whole day to take make a one pot, but it's very healthy for you also. I, I wasn't born in Burma, but when I eat it, it reminds me of like the time I was living there. It just reminds me of my, my family. And then you put a little bit of turmeric powder and then the onion. A long time ago, like when my parents had their restaurant, the Golden Triangle, it was the well only known. one yeah. restaurant, yeah. Uh, Burmese and uh, uh, Thai restaurant in Southern yeah. California. This is the chili paste that gives you a color and a little bit of a hot taste also. Well, I think in, in almost all communities, like food brings people together. The reason why I particularly enjoyed going to temples was not necessarily for like praying or meditating, but because I knew there would be a lot of food there. You could ju just see like how happy people are when they're, they're eating it and cooking together. A lot of the temples I'd go to, they would have fundraisers too, selling different kinds of Burmese food. So they would just use it as a way to like eat together, but also uplift the community. Well, and you could stare. Usually what we do is we just make it, the fish mash it, so in the soup become a chowder. Yeah, we celebrate both like Burmese holidays and Chinese holidays. It's kind of like an interesting mix because we're Burmese Chinese American. Like we're very proud of our culture. We try to incorporate all three. And I think here we also go to a lot of these gatherings like they're called was like festivals. There's the John. Yeah, and then it's like a, a Burmese New Year's and happened in April 14, 15, around that time. It's a water festival, so people attack each other with water. It's like a really big water fight. It's to like cleanse yourself cleanse, right. for the, the New Year. For the New Year. How long do you have to stir it? Well, usually we do it. You could either add water right now, or either you sometimes some people make it until really, really dry, the fish. It depends on, you know, how you like your fish. What's good about have, like being a part of three cultures is like we get three times the holidays, like Burmese holidays, Chinese holidays, like American holidays. And then uh, we're gonna put water right now. And then uh, we're gonna put fish sauce in it. How much do you usually put? Like a uh, half a cup, it depends on how Biggest the pot is. Mm -hmm. At the temple, the, the main dishes they usually prepare is like mohinga, mm -hmm. ono and then kausueto. Kausueto it's the like, uh, noodles salad. Wherever you go, you will find that dishes. Yeah. Well, mohinga is like traditionally a breakfast food, but because um, the economy was going down, mohinga is like very cheap to make. So I think over time it became like an all day food for people. And then let it cook for at least about half an hour or so. And after that, you add the rice powder. You soak it, you soak it. 
and a water. For how long? Oh, about five minutes or so when it's ready. Mm -hmm. And then you add the, the rice powder and it become a little bit thick. And after that, and then we could put some uh, more lemongrass for more flavor. And then this is the onion shallot, and then we add it at the end. And then we have two different type of noodles. Mm -hmm. The one is the rice noodle, the round one, and this is the flat noodle. And then some people like it both, and then some people like the round noodles to eat with the mohinga soup. Mm -hmm. These are the topping for mohinga. If you mm -hmm. like it, you could put everything or add on to it. And then you could either put in the soup or either, you know, hold it and eat it at the same time. There's a lot of things you could add, but these are like the most popular. When I was growing up, I would wake up in the morning and smell the mohinga, and I would feel really excited. This is one of the foods that I never get tired of. Like if someone were to ask me, what could you eat for the rest of your life? For me, the, one of the dishes would be mohinga.